Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from Tame Impala, titled Currents. So here's one of the frustrating things about being a music critic who still has a massive backlog. As much as I try, I just can't cover everything within the course of the year. And you occasionally you miss things or listen to albums out of chronological order. And on the one hand, this can be very rewarding as you can go back and listen to the classics and hear musical elements that eventually become very influential. But on the other hand, it also shows how some of said elements were further expanded or explored by other groups and you don't end up with the same appreciation of the original article. I mean, yeah, sure they started it, but other groups, they went on and did it better. One example of this, I originally heard Tame Impala way back in 2012 when they showed up in the collaboration album, The Flaming Lips and Hedy Fuentes, which I highly recommend. It's awesome. And of the many, many acts that showed up on that album, from everyone from Bonnie Vare to Nick Cave to Kesha, their contribution wasn't exactly one that stood out all that much, and I consequently never really bothered to delve deep into the group. So when I started getting requests to cover them this year, it was really my first time exploring them in depth. And I was definitely excited to see what this critically beloved band could really deliver. And man alive, I was underwhelmed. I'm not saying that they or either of their first two albums are bad. As a fan of psychedelic rock, they're very listenable, but the hype behind this group absolutely baffles me. The instrumentation was sprawling and languid, but rarely brought enough driving groove to the percussion. Instead, smearing over so many of the melodies and vocal lines of these egregious electronic effects that them felt that they muffled some real texture. Yes, Lonerism is definitely an improvement. It's probably their best album. But not being in love with Kevin Parker's vocals or his lyrics, which could definitely tread into the exasperating territory, even if it is intentional, I find it hard to really appreciate them as much as I want to. It didn't help that the more I listened through Lonerism, the more I just wanted to go back and listen to Sun Structures by Temples, which came out last year. It was one of my favorite records of last year, which brought a much more groove-driven, memorable brand of psychedelia to the table that I honestly liked a lot more. But seemingly like every single indie band these days, Kevin Parker decided to focus more on a synth pop, even disco inspired approach for his newest album, shifting more from guitars to synthesizers, which to me was a little concerning as the noisier guitar elements were the piece that I liked the most off of Tame Impala's first two releases, but hey, maybe it'll mean they'll focus more on the melodies, giving them a little bit more presence. So I checked out Currents. What did we get? I gotta tell you folks, this is gonna be one of those reviews that will piss a whole bunch of you off. Mostly because it's not a definitive positive or negative on Tame Impala or their new sound or their lyrical digressions that definitely raise more than their fair share of uncomfortable questions that don't work nearly as well as you might think they do. But did it at least translate into good music? Well, like most Tame Impala albums, I can definitely understand the appeal with this record more than ever. But in a year increasingly crowded with synth pop that isn't all that far removed from this, it's definitely not a record that I feel eager to revisit. In other words, it's decent, really at best. And the first and probably biggest reason why is Kevin Parker himself. Now, when he made more psychedelic material, it was a little bit trickier nailing down why his voice didn't really click for me. But with this album and a little bit more clarity, I definitely got it. With this high falsetto range where he definitely spends the majority of this album, he reminds me way too much of Peter Cetera. Now, you've probably forgotten about this guy and most of the work that he did with his former band Chicago, but they were chirp-topping hit makers throughout the 70s and the 80s. And one of the biggest reasons why so much of their easy listening schlock is borderline unlistenable for me was Peter Cetera's voice. And Kevin Parker might as well be the sequel. A half nasal croon that's got no tightness or punch that comes from the falsetto that I like, and all the languid lack of emotional range and soul coming from the falsetto that I don't. And just like with Adam Levine and Maroon 5, whenever he does it, whenever he tries to swear for impact, it comes across as smarmy and completely lacking in impact. And to his credit, he does change it up a bit. On Past Lives, where his spoken word digression is pitch shifted down and sounds even worse. Joy. Now, fortunately for him, he's mostly backed up by his melodic composition and most of his production. Now, I'll admit right out of the gate, the bass lines and especially some of the clap percussion, they feel both too stiff and clunky for this brand of retro-leaning synth pop, peppered with 70s AM rock, soul, and R&B. Especially for more of a record professing more changes, but you know what? From a compositional point of view, Parker has always been a really good melodic songwriter. The interweaving layers that disintegrate and reform on let it happen, especially on the chunkier psychedelic guitars come back in, the meatier, rollicking bass line, the less I know the better, that features some great subtle melodic interplay in the guitars and the keys, the oily cascade of synthesizers on Past Life that transitions through these rumbling wobbles into a shimmering chorus, the transition from aerial pink-esque chintzy lo-fi rock tones and synths to much cleaner, brighter tones with just a click, I really like them, to the gurgling low synth stalking beat and a great interlude against these hazy synths on new person, same old mistakes. Hell, even though the lyrics annoy the hell out of me on Cuz I'm a Man, we'll get to it, 
That baseline against the gleaming 80s R&B inspired key sinks is so impossible to really hate. Granted, my biggest issue with Tame Impala remains the same, and that's their usage of those phasing effects on the synths and the background textures to warp and contort them. To me, it's always felt incredibly clumsy, an attempt to artificially seal in the natural melodic sound and flow and expression. And when they already overuse reverb, it only further muddies the melody and the sound. It's less objectionable here in the confines of synth pop due to the mix being slightly more stripped back. But still, when I compare an act to the more natural swell of a band like Lower Dens, it just kind of grates on my nerves a little bit. And now we have to talk to about the lyrics, which also kind of grate on my nerves because, who oh boy, here's where things get tricky. Now, firstly, while much of the buzz has branded Currents as a breakup album, it's not quite that. Most because Kevin Parker is the one to do the dumping. Feeling a major change coming, which may or may not have been discovered under the influence of Nitrous, as implied by the interlude Nags, he dumps this girl as gently as he can, and not two songs later, he gets jealous, regrets it, and tries to get her back. All the while coming to terms with that both of them not being exactly perfect, and while change is natural and a good thing, too much of it done for its own sake is often disastrous. And of course, all of it is a meta-narrative for the album's shift and sound itself, making a parallel to 21 Pilots' blurry face this year, and Icon for Hire's self-titled album in 2013. And honestly, it's a good parallel. I typically like this sort of subject matter. But when you start looking into the details, this record can get insufferable in a hurry. For starters, both Yes, I'm Changing and Eventually feel completely, monumentally disingenuous. The sort of it's not you, it's me nonsense that brings as incredibly fake. And yes, I get that was the point. Parker pointed it out himself. But you place it in a human context, it doesn't make it any less condescending. Saying you're going to get back to her eventually is the definition of stringing somebody on. And that's a real douchebag move. It doesn't get any better when he tries to win her back. Mostly because he's got a brand of self-deprecation that several have drawn comparisons to similar work of Father John Misty on I Love You Honey Bear, which was my favorite album of this year. And now on Disciples, it actually gets pretty close to it, a far less detailed riff on the night Josh Tillman came to our apartment. But the biggest difference here comes on Cause I'm a Man, and the one that makes this record a lot harder to stomach. And it's a matter of taking responsibility. I mean, sure, Parker prostrates himself and begs for this girl's forgiveness, but he excuses his behavior with lines like, because I'm a man, woman, and I'm aware I'm not in control. And I'm sorry, that's total horseshit. And it paints the sly nigging that he tries on other tracks in a much worse light, as it makes his self-deprecation feel patently insincere. Josh Tillman's character, Father John Misty, was definitely an asshole. I think even he would admit that. But not only was he a good lyricist and a comic writer with far more lyrical imagination than this album has, he played the self-deprecation with a certain anxiousness that betrayed reality. You bought that he was coming from it. Kevin Parker's crooning doesn't nearly have that range, and the writing doesn't do enough to support his rationale, either for the change that he makes in the first place, or for the sudden desire to try and get his ex back. It comes across as kind of capricious, and more than a little bit self-obsessed, and doesn't do enough for it. And because, yeah, it has worked for him before, like on Lonerism, when he was dissecting his own introversion to startling effect, but it doesn't work here when there's other people involved. And a larger part of that is the tone. The dumping tracks are these gentle, calming affairs that don't match the subject matter at all. And when the self-deprecation reads as just hollow covering his own own ass and covering his own mistakes, I have a much harder time buying into his apologies as being legitimate, with only love slash paranoia coming remotely close to working. It might have worked a little bit stronger if the girl didn't actually take him back and all his apologies kind of meant nothing. But nope, the final song seems to imply that she did take him back, and that, if anything, rings as the most unbelievable, especially as she was already seeing somebody else. Now, of course, the easy excuse is that this is all a meta narrative about the change of the sound. But that doesn't really work either, because we don't get that moment where the instrumentation goes through that arc of changing too far beyond what Tame Impala has done before and then returning to a more evolved norm. Like it or not, you put on this album, it wouldn't be that hard to say that it is Tame Impala. But in the end, look, as I said, it's a frustrating lesson. Currents isn't really a bad album by the standards of synth pop. Sure, it's not doing anything as powerful as Lower Dens or as colorful as 21 Pilots or as relentlessly fun and kind of poignant as the Wombats, but it is listenable and it's better than the worst of the genre that I've heard thus far this year. But it definitely did not win me over on Tame Impala and I suspect fans who dug their more grand psychedelic side, the side that I like, probably will not be all that fond of this. For me, it's a 6 out of 10 and only recommended if you're more of a fan. For me though, the currents, they kind of remain the same. Underwhelming. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or any other albums coming up that you want me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to give them a listen. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.